Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview as well as some benchmarks on this video card from PNY. This is the GeForce GTX 660. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is a reference design video card from PNY, but they have added some value with some add-ons. Uh, but first off, compatible with Windows 7 down here, also compatible with Windows 8 of course. PNY is the official sponsor of Complexity Gaming. Did you know? Also, uh, HDMI out. You get a lifetime warranty from PNY, so they're standing behind their product. You get to download five free movies. You can choose from 50. Expires December th 31st, 2013. Uh, so that's a little, little bonus add-on right there. I'll show you guys how to access that. Uh, also up here, you get a free three-month subscription to ESEA. That's a premium video game network. So that's another add-on that they've done. Um, that's enough for the add-ons though, let's talk more about the video card. This is the GTX 660, so it's based on the Kepler architecture from NVIDIA. This is a 2 gig card, 2048 megabytes of GDDR5 memory. That's running at 1502 megahertz or 6008 megahertz effective memory speed. DirectX 11 support, SLI and physics compatible. Uh, also 3D vision support. You can actually push up to four monitors from this video card and you can use three of them for gaming. A little bit more information on the back, uh, some of the video games here that you can play. Did you know PNY, PNY makes all this other stuff too besides video cards? Yes, they do. Also uh, on the right side over here, we have some more of the detailed specs. Uh, so for example, you get 960 CUDA cores and that's uh, for GPU compute. That's by way of the SMX units that are involved here. So you get five SMX units that gives you 960 CUDA cores. Just to give you a um, uh, point of reference, uh, the SMX units and CUDA cores in the GTX 680 uh, is 1,536 CUDA cores or 8 SMX units. So that's sort of a little bit of an example of the difference uh, here between the 660 and the 680. You also get uh, access to a lot of the uh, Kepler bonus features such as TXAA and FXAA. Those are uh, anti-aliasing technologies or uh, software-based technologies. Uh, you also get adaptive V-Sync, which is really cool. It will minimize uh, tearing or stuttering in the games that you play by turning V-Sync on or off when it is necessary or unnecessary. Also, all these other specs right here, which uh, I will leave it to you guys to read off if you want to. And I should point out you need a minimum 450 watt power supply or greater with a 12 volt current rating of 24 amps on the 12 volt rail. Let's take a look inside the box, but first off on the sleeve here, located just inside, are your codes. So for your five bonus downloads as well as your ESEA subscription, I've taped over the ones in these so you guys can't steal them. Uh, but here we have packaging. Actually, I've been kind of fond of the PNY packaging for the six, at least the 660 and the 660 Ti I've seen. It's a little clamshell, it's easy to open. Seems fairly minimal as far as packaging goes. The, you know, it's nicely protected. Uh, this was a demo unit, so this is sort of a, not the CD that you guys will be getting, but um, you will get a driver disc, which you shouldn't use. You should download the latest drivers from the NVIDIA website. Uh, we also have some accessories here. Uh, we've got a little quick start guide, so basic instructions for what is a video card and how to install it and all that good stuff. So you can use that for your reference. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer video on Newegg TV if you like a bit more detailed instructions. You get a power adapter here, a couple Molex to 6-pin PCI Express, so you can use that. Again, 450 watt power supply recommended. You also get a DVI, digital to analog VGA adapter right there, uh, which you can use with one of the two DVI outs on the back of the video card. Here's the video card itself, and as previously mentioned, this is adhering mostly to the reference design from NVIDIA. So as you can see, you have an enclosed shroud-style cooler right there. Uh, you have a blower-style fan down at that end, so that's going to be drawing air from the interior of your case, pushing it along the aluminum fin stack that's located underneath the shroud right here, and ejecting most of the air out the rear of the card right there. Uh, since I'm here, I might as well point out the uh, video outs that you get. So two dual-link DVI connectors right there. Bear in mind the top one here is digital only. Bottom one is digital plus analog. So if you're going to use that DVI to VGA adapter, use it with the lower plug. Uh, but both of these are dual-link, so they can support resolutions up to 2560 by 1600. You also get an HDMI out as well as a display port out. Display port can also do that higher resolution. Uh, moving on here to this side, we have the PCB of the video card, and this here's where you can see sort of the design. PCB is actually fairly short. It terminates right about there. 
And uh, down here on this end, you can see the rest of the blower style fan and enclosure extending. It's actually a few gaps right here to a little, a little bit of air out that direction. You can see the memory modules installed. Also where the GPU would be, which is right underneath that area right there. And uh, the heat sink is mainly attached, actually the, the shroud I should say is attached with um, Phillips head screws scattered throughout. And then you got these uh, spring loaded screws and that's what's really holding that cooler up against the GPU. GPU, speaking of which, is the GK106 GPU. That's as opposed to the GK104 that's used in the 680. Uh, it's based on 28 nanometer manufacturing technology. The Kepler architecture, as previously mentioned, 221 square millimeter die, 960 CUDA cores, 5 SMX units, 24 raster units, and then, of course, oh, all your memory right there. You can see a few of the Samsung memory chips that are installed. Over on this side, we can see the power requirements. Again, just the six pin PCI Express power required. And you get a lot of, of uh, performance from this video card with just the six pin PCI Express power connector. Down at this end, you have a single SLI finger and uh, this card is SLI capable, just two way. So you can do one or two of these cards together. And uh, speaking of which, if you'd like to check it out, we have a video comparing two of these GTX 660s in SLI to a single 680, if you want to check it out. Some interesting information there. Here's a measurement of the card measured from the PCI bracket. And as you can see, it's a little bit longer than nine and a half inches. I would say give yourself 10 inches minimum in your case, just so you have room to install and uninstall the video card. But it should fit in most existing uh, mid, mid tower, full tower computer cases. Also down here at the bottom, you got your PCI Express connector. It's a PCI Express Gen 3 compatible. Although bear in mind, uh, if you're currently running Gen 2, uh, it's still going to perform just as well, maybe just a tick or two slower than Gen 3. Gen 3 primarily gives you a bandwidth and efficiency improvement, but it's not really necessary um, for the GTX 660. I also wanted to point out the GPU. I've, I've mentioned it a few times and that it is a stock GPU, but I never said the frequency. Uh, the frequency of the GPU is it runs at a base clock of 930, I'm sorry, 980 megahertz and a boost clock will go up to 1033 megahertz. Uh, if you're not familiar with boost clock, as long as the temperature is within a acceptable parameters, it will automatically boost your GPU frequency and give you a bit of an automatic overclock. Next up, we're gonna move into some benchmarks. Uh, we tested this in various configurations and we've also included Battlefield 3. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Hope you have enjoyed. Once again, this has been the PNY GeForce GTX 660 Reference Edition. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.